This is Champion. Colin McGuigan for oh, yeah, IFL TV. I'm a Williams. We had a, a really deep conversation the other day. You, you, to, you told me about all those people that didn't back you. you. You proved them all wrong tonight. How good does that feel? Amazing. Man, it feels amazing. And you know what? I ain't even focusing on the naysayers or the doubters or the haters. Forget them. I'm highlighting the people on my team, man. Like I said, first in the post-fight interview, shout out to my promoter, shout out to my manager, shout out to my team, shout out to everybody who believed through everything, you know. We're sports athletes, you know. There's wins and losses in every last sport it happens. But just for some reason in boxing, you know, once you have one setback or you don't come up with a victory, people turn their back on you completely. And... Uh, I just been blessed to have a team that been loyal, that been down. Everybody in that ring with me. My guy Joel Wildle, my guy Brandon Saunders, they weren't able to make it out here, but they was right there supporting. Shout out to my team, man. I love them. I watched you in there, right? You've got a little you've got a mean streak in you that, that and I said this to you the other day, it's something different. You take like you flipped the switch, right? You took some shots in there, then you came back. It was like you were just getting up to that opportunity where you knew you could take him out. Did you know from that minute you stepped in there tonight that you could win on that opportunity? I knew definitely I would take him out. I just, uh, like I said in the last interview, when guys know they can come in and change their life against certain fighters, it's a different energy they bring. And if they can just jump down in there and have a 50-50, just rock them, sock them competition, they'll do it because they can just close their eyes and throw and, and, and wish. But I knew the first couple of rounds I had to jab, I had to control the ring, I had to move, I had to break them down, put damage on them, you know, in a way that he doesn't know that it's happening, it just accumulates on him. And then the fourth round, I sat down and I showed him, I can beat you at your own game. You want to walk down and throw hard shots, I can beat you at, that, at your own game. I can throw those punches just the same as you. And I'll land mine. And then in the fifth round, you see what happens after you break a person down strategically. I, I want you to, to talk to me about a comment you made in the ring. You, you actually told us the other day in the interview, you're not mentioning any names until now, but you had a comment up there for middleweights that have been talking. Who were you referring to? Forget them. Forget about them. Let's focus on the world champions. Johnny Beck. Let's focus on the world champions. Carlos Adamas. Let's focus on Erzlan Di Lara. Let's focus on them guys. I don't want to even get them guys. No, it's nobody special. I'm telling you, it's just. Well, are these people that that came out after your defeat and, and tried to make you look bad in the public? Is that what happened? That, yeah, that's exactly what happened. So that's exactly what happened. You know, guys tried to, you know, capitalize on the fact that I was building back, you know, coming back after fighting the biggest, one of the biggest shows in 2024, you know, a super valiant effort you know these guys that's what weak people do they try to kick you while you're down they try to find that little they think that it's a vulnerable point but it's really not everything that guys do at that point it just shows how weak they are because be, before when you undefeated and nothing's going wrong those guys are quiet as mouses you know quiet as a mouse now when you go through something they think that's their time to little slip something in we're not even gonna mention those guys just know i know exactly who y'all are and you know, if y'all ever make it to a top level, if y'all ever get a title, if y'all ever do anything like that, I'll be waiting and I'll decapitate you. Um, well, give me a, an idea of what you want in 2025. I know you've probably not even spoke to your promoter, Eddie Hearn. You've probably not spoken to Sam, but who do you want in 2025? 2025, I want anybody who ends up with the belts. I know my main thing is to get a belt. My main thing is to go snatch a belt, challenge for a belt. That's my number one thing because their belts are pretty spread out. So it doesn't look like things will be vacated too much. You got to go take one. You know, I think Carlos or Johnny Beck, one of those two, they need a competition. Middleweight division is top level fighters, a few of them, and then it falls off. So you got to fight top guys, especially, you know, I'm high in these sanctioning bodies and things of that nature. So the guys I'm looking for seriously is the guys with the belts, Arizlan Dilar, Johnny Beck, Carlos Adamas. And I think Hamza Shiraz is going to go take. Who's he fighting? He got a fight lined up. Yeah, we don't know who, though. I think they're he got You're saying shot. Johnny Beck. I think he has a shot. I truly believe, and I shared the ring with him in a war. I truly believe he can go get a world championship belt. He gets that. I get one. We can unify. But I know damn well we're not going to fight unless I get one, too. So 
that's another name I'm always going to be looking for, you know, as a competitor. Let's run it back. You know what I'm saying? That's how you that's what you got to do. But I'm not going to call them out in a way that's just irrational. I know I got to do things to make it make sense. So those guys with the belts is definitely who I'm focused on right now. Final one from me, Amo. You're someone that I believe has matured so much over the, the last 24 months since I first met you, right? What would your message be to Khalil Cole tonight to unfortunately lost in that fight? What would your message be to Khalil? Khalil is my brother. He's my brother. And it's going to hurt because he's a champion. It's going to hurt. Every day it's going to hurt. You're going to think about it. It's going to hurt. But just like my guy Pete Berg told me, every decision he makes right now is right in the next 10 chapters of his life. So he got to make sure that pain is there, those voices are in his head. He got to make sure his actions are pushing him towards a world championship. He got to make sure he asks himself, what do I have to do in this moment? No matter how, to, no matter what, no matter what's going on in my head, no matter what I feel like physically, what do I have to do to become a world championship? Put it down on the paper and follow that. Follow it. No matter how you feel, get yourself out the bed, get your feet on the ground. Because I believe in him. I've been knowing him for a long time and I know he's a champion. I just want him to keep his head up and face this adversity like a champion. And I can tell him just from experience that tonight, it ain't no better feeling in the world than coming back and proving the doubters wrong. It ain't no better feeling in the world than proving yourself wrong. Because sometimes it's going to be his own voice having, you know, giving them problems. You got to fight all that. You got to fight all that. Prove to yourself, prove to the world that you're a champion and come back stronger. I'm a Williams. Pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it.